The awesome people over at Shudder sent us a review copy of their new French horror thriller, Infested. Directed by Sebastian Vanacek and written by Vanacek along with Florian Bernard. Infested follows Caleb, a down-on-his-luck hustler doing what he can to make money. He and his sister live in an apartment they inherited when their mother passed away. They can barely afford to keep it. The tension and different approaches on how to handle things has them butting heads all the time. Caleb's always been fascinated by exotic animals and always wanted to open a niche zoo. That dream was shared with his somewhat estranged best friend. Caleb buys a strange spider, the likes of which he's never seen before. He brings it back into his apartment. As he moves on with his evening, he goes to a party in the building where we meet a lot of the other tenants and that estranged best friend I mentioned. The spider he bought, inevitably, gets out and starts laying eggs very quickly. The eggs hatch even faster. The spider also grows at a rapid pace the more it feels threatened. When someone dies in the building because of the spider, the police force a quarantine, thinking the person died of a mysterious virus. That is, before the spiders take over the building. The movie opens in what looks like the Middle East. For whatever reason, a group of men are trying to smoke out and catch these brutal, murderous spiders. One guy is attacked, and he's screaming in agony until his buddy ends his suffering with a machete. As brutal as killing someone with a machete is, it looks like it was an act of mercy. The cold open like this is expertly done. There's a bit of dialogue, but no subtitles. You don't need them. Showing rather than telling is in full effect here. Unfortunately, it would be about half an hour before the storytelling is as effective as the intro. We meet Caleb and follow him through his world. We meet a lot of the other tenants in the building at that party I mentioned. All this table setting is necessary so no we know who the people are before we get into the nightmare of the spiders, but it could have been done so much more efficiently. Another pass with an editor with a heavier hand could have shown us all we needed without the very drawn-out 30-minute introductions, especially since a good portion of these people are barely in the rest of the movie. So we've met the people at the party, the spider's out, and the building is slowly being taken over. These spider-centric scenes are where the movie really shines. I mean, it's called Infested, it's about killer spiders, is what we all showed up for. It starts small, spiders in the background of scenes, lurking in vents, or hidden in openings right near a person's face or hand. Subtle webs that have no special attention brought to them show up here and there in the building before it's really unavoidable. When the horror comes into the forefront, it's very effective. There are plenty of genuine surprises, no cheap jump scares. The horror toes the line between subtle to right in your face. The pacing is pitch perfect as the movie builds toward the climax. Without going too hard into spoilers, the climax is very eerie and has just one element too many that ruins it a little bit. It would have been so much more effective to keep it simpler. I get the story need for the police putting the building under quarantine. We had to keep all the characters inside with the spiders. But the quarantine itself seems forced or out of left field. One guy in kind of a rundown apartment building dies of a mysterious disease and they just instantly assume this is a disease that's going to spread over the country. We have to shut this whole building down and lock people inside. They don't bring in any doctors. They don't do any tests. They don't bring in any examiners. They don't even suspect drug use, which in a place like that, at least in this country, would seem obvious. And the police kind of disappear for a bit. They're not a direct part of the rest of the movie until they come back later on, which is that extra layer I was just referring to. The police involvement toward the end of the movie, it's, it's pretty laughable. It felt like Infested was trying to make some sort of totalitarian statement. It didn't land. If it was just simply a story element with no larger meaning, it still didn't really land. Along with the well-done horror intention, the tone is excellent. The lighting and sound design are spot on. I watched it on a streaming screener, so the sound was a bit compressed, but even with that, there were still small notes, details, and sound effects that were perfectly creepy. There was some French rap earlier in the movie to kind of set the stage of the neighborhood we're in, and it did not have the intended effect. As someone with no arachnophobia, this movie made my skin crawl several times. I'd be watching, hung up on the tension, and catch myself rubbing an arm or leg where it felt like something was crawling on me. There are some very effective shots I don't want to give away that will have me checking in small dark areas of my house for the next few weeks. Along with the pacing and extra story layer that simply weren't needed, Infested is not a good title. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying it's not a good movie, just the actual title itself is so generic and far too common for the movie to be found in a casual search. You have to know exactly what you're looking for. Maybe it was a translation issue, maybe it's a better title in French, but a bit more time workshopping at least the English version of the title I think would go a long way into this movie getting discovered once it comes out. Given the quality of the movie, the early buzz around it, and the fact that Sebastian Vanacek, if that's how you say the name, I apologize, is directing the next Evil Dead movie, I think Infest is going to do just fine. 
Check out Infested on Shutter, available now. Then check out this playlist for more movies you should be watching.